Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the Puzzle First protocol, how the client and server talk to each other and give you a little bit of an idea sort of why that split is the way it is. Um, so in general, um, a client, which is you, a player on your computer, will connect to a server. Um, and there are requests that you can make to that server and responses that you can get back. And two servers can talk to each other. And although there is kind of a back and forth communication because they're peers, um, anything that is a request for one is a response for the other. So they're a symmetrical um, kind of communication. So um, the client can ask for a bunch of things and some of these come with responses. So there's a few general categories that I'll go through. Um, in each one, there are a number of particular requests, but the details don't particularly matter um, at this level. So obviously big one is assets. Um, uh, you wanna be able to download game assets and upload game assets. Um, so for downloading, uh, you generally have to know what the asset is that you're after and then you can request it. Um, your server may or may not have it. If it doesn't have it, then it has the ability to go and request from other servers to see if they have it. And so the request is also included in the um, server to server communication. Um, uploading is really creating an asset. So you are saying, I have a new world I wanna create um, that you've been working on in your editor or in your um, you know, 3D modeling program and you want to create that asset. So you upload some of that information to create the asset. The server adds some additional information like who you are um, and creates the asset and then has that asset available and can exchange it. Um, uh, changing your avatar, so getting the current state of your avatar and uh, adding a new one. Um, there's a bunch of bookmark features, so you can bookmark, uh, you know, worlds that you want to go to, um, friends and sort of buddies um, in the network, um, uh, assets that you want to keep track of, uh, servers that you want to keep track of. Um, so there's a bunch of different types of bookmarks, and they've all got the same kind of add this to my bookmarks, remove this from my bookmarks, download all my bookmarks. Um, since you want to be able to chat with other people, there's a bunch of stuff for direct messages and obviously send a message to a person and then receive a message from a person. Um, but there's also some, you know, give me all the new messages, go back in time and get me the chat history, things like that. Um, for other players, you want to be able to know if they're online um, and potentially the location of them. So both of those are options that the user can control. They can set rules um, for how their online status is checked. Um, so any player can request to check the status of any other player and then potentially they get back a response that's either, I know they're online, I know they're not online, I know their location, or eh, I'm not telling you. Um, and then uh, for the worlds that you have for the realms, uh, you want to be able to create worlds, um, delete them, um, change the access control so who can get into that world, and you want to be able to find worlds. Um, so that can be find worlds that belong to you, that belong to uh, a particular server, be that your own server or another server, um, and uh, you know just generally go searching for, uh, for realms based on a, a kind of request, like a kind of query for what set of uh, realms you're looking for. So when it comes to peers, um, mentioned this before, they need to be able to exchange assets. Um, they also need the infrastructure to exchange direct messages across different servers. Um, again, they need to be able to do the uh, check online and location information for a player across servers um, and to be able to list realms once again, across servers. So the big uh, addition that peers have is um, realm visitors. So when I connect to my server, I may want to access a realm that's on a different server. And so there is a kind of transfer uh, of information where um, 
my server needs to be able to say to the other server, hey, this player wants to visit a realm that's on your server. Um, if that server okays it, um, then there needs to be um, a proxying of whatever is going on in that realm from the other server to me as the player and anything I want to do in that um, realm, you know, send messages or um, interact with the world that needs to be proxied back to that other server. So um, there's a bunch of stuff about that and there's some complexities surrounding um, the way that um, players get um, handled between the different worlds. So if I'm uh, connected to a server and that other server dies um, and I want to leave that world or I get kicked out of that world or the world is deleted, like um, when does the proxying end? Um, and so there's a bunch of uh, communication that goes with that, especially if the servers are in disagreement. So if, um, you know, if I was on a realm in server A um, and then I leave and, uh, you know, server A keeps sending messages about the updated status of that realm, um, my server needs to be like, they're not there anymore. I, you, you need to stop now. Um, so the realm is another kind of domain for where information is shared. And so this diagram is meant to indicate that, you know, we have two different clients that are connected to different servers the realm exists on one server, but intermediate servers can proxy communication um, to that realm. So although a realm isn't um, uh, like its own entity, it exists within a server, it's still possible to be shared um, between multiple servers. So um, the realm requests determine what actually goes on in the realm and that proxying server will see uh, this information, but in general, it doesn't do much beyond pass it along. So obviously players want to be able to move around the realm, uh, interact with objects in the realm, interact with other players in the realm, um, communicate via the group chat that is the realm chat. Uh, there is an idea of a warp two that um, with permission, you can say, move my avatar to the location of another player. So if you're, um, you know, joining someone who's um, already deep into, you know, the bowels of a world um, and you end up at the entry point, it's nice to be able to say, ah, come join me. And they don't have to go through whatever circuitous path to get there. Um, this is an idea from the Uru test servers. Uh, where this feature exists and it's extremely useful in a lot of situations. So something that I wanted to, to include. Um, the other thing you can do is alter the realm itself. So um, there's a bunch of properties of the realms, including the access control um, and the, uh, the name of the realm. And the designer of the world can also make certain parts of the world modifiable. All of that um, can be changed uh, through the realm and also administration for the players. So if you know you want to kick someone out of a realm and you have the admin rights to do that, um, then you can uh, kick them out. So those are the kind of core groups of, um, of information that can be exchanged. Um, and they're logically separate entities. So if you want to look at the code, um, there is an excruciatingly long list of every request and every response and what it means and what information it entails and um, how it's meant to be interpreted. Um, but as a high level overview, that's kind of all you really need to know. That, that's more nitty gritty than you really need to know. Um, but I think it's a useful model for understanding uh, kind of how the realm system is designed to work. Um, and also you can see how extensions to this uh, in the future would want to work. So if you're going to add more things to what a realm can either respond with or be requested of a realm, uh, it may be that intervening servers uh, also need to at least 
understand that well enough to be able to relay it to the other server. Um, so in general, the goal is to make these requests as flexible um, as possible right now so that we don't have to do a lot of redesigning uh, in the future, um, but also keep them relatively um, well scoped and tight um, so that they're not um, you know, too ambiguous and we have multiple interpretations of the same information. Anyway, that's the general idea.